Ladies and gentlemen, it's Wednesday, which means it's time for another live stream. Color looks really strange. Not sure why. Um, so today, uh, things got a little carried away here, and I completely, completely forgot to schedule the stream. Obviously, my microphone's all jacked up. I'm just getting this all fired up here. Oh, how are you guys doing today? I look really odd, at least from here. But we've got some people here in the in the uh, chat already. A fan, uh, Sagan, Christ Centered Iron Works, key, Keyboard Keys, Carlos. What's up, Carlos? Uh, Christopher, Nathan, Will, Roman, Nando, and others. Welcome, everybody. Um, it is Wednesday, my dudes. And yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Usually I have things scheduled at least an hour before the stream goes up, but we're just throwing things together here. Really not sure. Do I look orange? Really, really orange to you guys? I'm not sure exactly what's up. Okay, I look fine. Maybe it's just this monitor. Yeah, it looks better on the other monitor. Okay. Um, yeah. So today I figured we'd do a Q&A, chat about whatever. Also, if you guys are interested, um, hit me with a link. Maybe we'll do some lighting critiquing. I mentioned that in the last stream, and uh, I think that might be kind of fun if you, you know, are willing to share a YouTube video or, or if you're struggling with a, a space that you're trying to shoot videos in. Um, maybe we could do something like that. All right. Let me make this window a little bigger so I can see what is going on. Color is good. Great. Good morning from New Zealand. Awesome. Um, yes, GH5 firmware today. So I'm curious to see what uh, that is going to look like. I know some people have already done some videos on it. And um, what I wish they had included in that firmware update was something for the GH5S. My goodness, that was loud. Sorry about that. Uh, the GH5S really is struggling with that uh, VFR or that variable frame rate. So um, in certain lighting conditions, it's okay. But a lot of the time you get some horribly bad noise, even at low ISOs. So yeah. Um, dat rim light, rim light, yep. That's a little intense. I literally just fired everything up and jumped on here. Uh, someone asked about the camera. I'm using the A7 III. Um, right now with the standard or zero picture profile, if you will. And, uh, my white balance might be a hair off. Yeah. Would you be able to show how to start a podcast? Um, probably other people would be better. I used to have a podcast back in the day, um, but I didn't really do it quite right. I didn't have it hosted properly. So it was on iTunes, but it only showed the top 10 episodes and then it would delete them after that. But uh, yeah, podcasts are getting real hot. It seems uh, a lot of YouTubers are jumping on the podcast bandwagon. And I think that's smart. If I was a little more put together here, I'd probably turn these into podcasts. Um, maybe we will someday. I don't know. But I would want to have other people on with me just because I feel my voice alone for an hour would be kind of <laughs> kind of ridiculous. Um, I use the A6300 with the Blackmagic Video Assist. Love it. But do you have any solution for the blackout of the camera? So, yeah, usually what I do with Sony cameras, the A7 III is the exact same way. When you hit record and you're using 4K and you have an external monitor, the screen on the back of the camera goes black, but it doesn't show the information on your monitor all the time, depending on what you're going with. So what I usually do is I just make sure I can see both screens and I just use the back of the camera for settings and then for the image itself, I focus on the uh, the monitor. Um, what do you think about using the 6 a6300 for live streaming? I think that would be a perfect camera. I use it for a good while here. Um, I usually just for kicks bounce between cameras, um, but I've used that one. The autofocus is amazing, so it makes a lot of sense. Um, how are you finding the X-H1 full review coming anytime soon from Joshua? Funny you should ask that because the reason I'm late today is I got carried away writing the script or at least kind of a big outline for that video. Um, so yeah, the video is coming out soon. For you guys, I'll just give you a quick rundown, really short for those who don't care. 
Um, but essentially, it's a tough sell right now. With Sony's a7 III, with Panasonic's GH5, the pricing of that camera is kind of rough. And Fuji kind of shot themselves in the foot by releasing the uh, firmware update for the X-T2, which gives you 120 frames per second internal and F-log internal, which were both big selling points on the X-H1. What I'm hoping is going to happen is down the road, Fuji is going to um, give us a big update for the X-H1 and we'll have something exciting. I would imagine that's what they're going to do. I love that camera and it also frustrates me a lot. Um, I think their next camera is going to be great. Their next video issue, maybe the X-H2, is going to be huge because they care about video. They've released two insanely popular um, cinema lenses so I can't see them not uh, giving us more pro-level features down the road. Um, all right, where was I? Depth of field is epic. Yeah, this is the Sony 28mm f2. What frames per second am I shooting this at? I think it's set to 24, um, but I haven't confirmed that. I literally just grabbed the camera, threw it on here, and hooked up the stream. OBS, yes, we're shooting at OBS. Uh, keyboard um, I'm down with that could use some help with my latest review lighting with a new background cool 30-day reviews drop it in the uh, link in the chat and we'll check it out um, yes I'm using OBS let's see here yeah the lens is the 28 to 28 f2 um, yes so the update for the GH5 I think they did change the color science because I watched a um, autofocus test comparison and someone had both camera or a camera with and without the new firmware and they looked very GH5S-esque, if that makes any sense. So I think they did make that change. Uh, opinion on the 5D Mark IV, um, a little pricey if you're going after it for just video, in my opinion, but I know a lot of people really dig that camera. Budget-friendly camera you'd recommend for a live YouTube show from Ed. Um, you could do, if you want a big sensor camera, um, I think one of the better ones right now would probably be the Sony A6000. So it's kind of like the camera that came before the 6300. It's essentially an A6300, but it doesn't do 4K. But the autofocus is amazing, and that would be great for a little live stream camera. Uh, what do I think of the new Tamron 20, uh, 28 to 75 for Sony from Matthew Brown? Um, I pre-ordered one. I think for the money, it's insane value. Um, I just hope that the whole autofocus thing gets sorted. Uh, cause I know a lot of people have either pre-production models or production models and, uh, the autofocus is kind of funky on that for video. So hopefully that gets sorted. Uh, you said last time you had a Good tip for storing light soft boxes. I'm literally dying. What's your secret from Joshua? So here's what I do. You go to like Lowe's or Home Depot, probably Home Depot, uh, and they have those $1 A clamps. They're heavy duty clamps. I think they're like four inches or something. Can't remember the term for the size of the clamp, uh, but they have a ring built into them. So what I do is I get some carabiners and I uh, clip a carabiner into that little hole on the clamp. I don't think I have the clamp near me. Uh, and I just use the clamp on the Bowen's mount of the soft box. Man, this isn't very visual. You take the soft box, you put a clamp on it really strong. It's not going anywhere. Then you run a chain or a rope and you attach it to the ceiling with another carabiner if you wanted to. Uh, and then I just let them hang from the ceiling. When I need them, I just undo the clamp and then use the light and put it back on the ceiling. That way you don't have to rebuild them. It's out of the way and it works for me even though I'm in a space with very low ceilings. I just use it around the perimeter. So that works for me. Hopefully that's helpful. Uh, what do I think of the Ronin S? It looks slick. I mean, they're all, I was talking to Corbin Tyson, uh, my good friend who was on the live stream two weeks ago or three, and he's been doing a couple uh, gimbal reviews for me. And as he said, they're all getting just super good. So it used to be there was one that was the best. Now they're all getting really good. It's just different features. Uh, so it's hard to go wrong these days unless you buy some super sketchy Chinese uh, brand. Good question. Um, favorite places. Cool. You're welcome, Martin. 
Uh, how do you do a time lapse on the G7? It's the camera I have and would like to do some sort of time lapse. I believe that has built in time lapse. There should be on the dial on the left of the side of the viewfinder a little multi picture or a little arrows circle icon. And you select that and then you can go through those and doing time lapses. What's your lighting setup right now? I'm doing a, I'm releasing a video on the entire desk setup as it is this second tomorrow. So tomorrow there will be a video and I'm loving it because I changed it recently. It's similar, but a little different. Man, my backlights are way too powerful with this current setup. But um, yeah, I have a C stand behind my desk here with a light above and then a camera right over the uh, monitor. And um, I changed up my soundboard, which is awesome. It's vertical now. So instead of laying flat, you don't have to do this. You just look over. I can reach the knobs just fine. So yeah, tomorrow video on that. Um, love the video on the tilt macro lens. How's the crop on the GH5 with Metabones? It's not too bad. It's, I mean, it's a 15 millimeter lens, so you'll still get a little bit of crop, but not bad at all, especially on the GH5S with the Metabones. Um, and maybe we'll see more videos on Venus Optics, which is the company that makes the <clears throat> that 15 millimeter I talked about. So yeah, maybe uh, tweet at them, be like, yo, you should work with Caleb some more, because we're maybe, maybe. We'll see some interesting stuff there. Um, what? Uh, talked about that one already. Thoughts on the YN600 and 900, enough power? Probably plenty of power. They just have fans built in, so they might get kind of noisy. And damn J, five euros. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for the donation. I think, sir, maybe, ma'am. Yeah, it looks like a, a, a dude. Uh, he says, hey, can you recommend a little slider where the camera also rotates itself? Uh, of course, as cheap and as good as possible. Um, <clears throat> so you're talking about like some kind of head on the slider that rotates, uh, in which case you could just get any slider. There's a lot of cheap ones on Amazon these days. Uh, and then just get a little pan head. Um, I think that's what you mean, but l l clarify if, if that's not what you mean. I'm going to take a sip because I'm getting all crackly here. <clears throat> uh, yes, this is the Rode NTG4, like I'll talk about in tomorrow's video. The only reason I'm using this is I had it, and so I put it to work here. But um, I'd probably be using, if I could just buy a new mic today, probably a pencil condenser microphone. Check out Curtis Judd's YouTube channel for more information on that. And the reason I don't have like one of those big fat mics, the large diaphragms that people usually use, is I like to do this. It's not going to sound as good, but I hide the microphone and I can shoot. Wow, this this is getting loose here. Um, and then I shoot my videos with the microphone hidden. Let me snug this up real quick. Been moving stuff around. Ooh, focus is getting a little funky. So yeah, that's why I use a shotgun. It also helps with noise reduction. rejection. There's stuff going on upstairs and hopefully you're not hearing too much of that. Best drone for the money right now. I'm not a big drone guy, but woo, that um, uh, Mavic Air seems pretty legit. Um, thank you for the kind words, Martin. He says, uh, giving lots of value. Um, <laughs> whoops, just lost. There we go. Every once in a while, the chat auto jumps down, so I have to make sure I'm on top of that. Um, how do you set up live stream audio? Sound is so clear. So tomorrow's video, I'll talk about it, but this microphone goes into a soundboard over here. And the reason it sounds good is because my voice is right here on the microphone. And that makes all the world, a world's of, a world of difference. <laughs> uh, so yeah, give the microphone, as I've said in the past, keep your friends close and your microphones closer. And that's like the number one thing you can do for your sound quality. Unable to post links. Um, hmm, that's a problem. Um, I don't know if there's a way for me to change that. Can anyone else post links? Should be able to post links. Um, or at least maybe like if you can post the latter part. So instead of youtube.com slash blah, 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 just do the slash, you know, video link and I'll, I'll make that work. 
Um, going down here. Da, 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 da. Hello from Spain. Hello, BM. Goes tech. Um, happy about the color science change if it did happen. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, do you have ventilation? I hear something. Yeah, you're probably hearing stuff upstairs. Um, and, oh yeah, there is a uh, air purifier that's on right now. That's the other thing that's kind of making some sounds back there. Should I get a bunch of external equipment like monitors, etc., or should I invest in a better camera? That's a great question, Stevie. Um, I guess it would depend. I don't think it makes sense to buy a $2,000 camera and then spend $4,000 on stuff around it. At that point, just buy like an FS5, you know, a C200 or something like that. Um, but luckily these days it's pretty affordable to make stuff like that work so monitors you can get a solid monitor for 180 and up um yeah so i now if you have a 200 hundred dollar camera then you might want to consider not buying a bunch of external stuff unless you know you'll use it in the future so little five inch monitors are super handy so that's something that you probably would continue to use or a good microphone, but I wouldn't buy a very specific piece of gear for a cheap camera that is useless if you upgrade, if that makes sense. Great question though. Um, have you tried the Blackmagic Assist? I have not. Uh, I've come close to checking out a couple times, but I know there's some weird stuff that people have talked about they've had issues with and the battery life is kind of poo-poo. Um, and I've been really happy with Atomist gear, so yeah. Especially now that they have a 5-inch coming out. Uh, when will your vintage lens video come out? Um, from Nate. Yeah. What's up, Nate? Um, it's going to depend. I'm, I'm kind of messing with my schedule right now and uh, trying to make, you know, keep that balance of quality and quantity going on. So we'll see. I've got a ton of vintage lens sets being built right now that I've slowly been working on for the past year. Uh, so all that stuff will happen probably this summer. I'm going to be shooting this weekend, hopefully some stuff and get that ball rolling. Uh, yes. Road NTG four. Um, light setup I'm using right now. Watch tomorrow's video. Everybody tomorrow's video doing a 2.0 desk setup including details about the lighting, the camera, monitors, sound, all that good stuff. Um, and there's some clips of me gaming for those who care. <laughs> uh, do you ever have any short films you've made that we can see? Uh, all the work that I, most of the work that I did before I went full-time here was for producers and directors. So they would hire me to camera operate, edit things like that so it's actually their work and then i just was hired to shoot those uh there are i'll have to figure out where they are there's a bunch of stuff i shot on the side i'll have to hunt down from the 2007 to 10 years um i'll see if i can find those but nothing recent um do you think the 8518 FE autofocus works nice for video? Yeah, so made in video, um, that's a great question. The three lenses I'm thinking of eventually having, right now I have the 28 F2, really dig it, great for video. Um, I'm bidding right now on a used 55 F18, and I think that's the best autofocus 50-ish lens uh, that's fast. And then the 85. So I think those three lenses, if you want fast uh, primes that aren't going to cost $2,000, those would be a good good place to go or a good good set to get. So, yeah, I think the 85 is going to be stellar, especially on that full frame. Uh, right on, Joshua. Um, when you film, it's good to stay far away from the background so what do you do in small spaces? It's a great question. One thing I would do is just embrace it. If you're in a small space, 
Um, usually I'll try to find some negative space on the wall. So try to find a blank wall or just buy some big sheets of paper or use a paper roll and just, you know what, I'm not going to get shallow depth of field. So I might as well just make it negative space. Another thing you could do is embrace it and realize it's going to be in focus and put something interesting there um, or use patterns. So you could shoot into a corner. So right now there's a flat wall behind me. But if I was facing like this and if the camera was going this way, you could have the corner right behind you and um, just put things ge geometrically on the walls that uh, make sense. And maybe you take advantage of that. Use lines, maybe some artwork. Um, I know you can buy or you could make some geometric like they make these wall panels that uh, look really cool. You could do something like that. Um, one thing I've seen is you take a bunch of rolled up paper and you, you know, uh, not rip it up, but like, you know, make it really wrinkly, just find a way to, you know, it's going to look good. You know, it's going to be in focus or use a full frame with a fast lens. That's wide. That would do the trick too. Cause right now I'm using a 28 at F2. The background is maybe nine feet behind me. So you could do something like this where you just all the way up against the wall. I can't go that way anymore in this room. Good question though. Um, do you think recording in 24 P is a good idea for cinematic spots? Um, I shoot at 23, nine, eight instead of true 24, unless that's what you're talking about. Um, just because I know it's going to mix with other cameras. If you shoot at true 24 and then you want to add some, you know, something else, it could be kind of difficult. And 2398 is a little more of a standard that'll be broadcast friendly. But if you're doing it for the web, you can do anything you want. That's the beauty is there's no real rules there. Wow, I need to catch up here. Uh, do you recommend the Canon 10 to 18? I haven't used it a lot, but if you're talking about the EFS version, that's not bad. What camera bags and cases do you recommend? Good old fashioned Pelican. Just they're, you, they can take a beating and you can pass them on to your grandchildren. Um, and then I really like Porta Brace. They're handmade bags. They're really tough. And uh, again, that that'll be around before us, our kids, and yeah, they'll be around forever. Um, will you do a full review of the A7 III? Yes, I would definitely will. There'll also be a guide. Uh, you should do an FS700 video. I'm torn between the FS5 and FS700 for ProRes RAW. Great, great question or comment. Um, I'm hoping to do a buying of whatever year old camera video or tw uh, FS 700 in 2018 question mark. Um, because it's great. It's going to come down to form factor and, um, the variable ND for the most part, because I believe the sensors are the same for what it's worth. Question from Chad Winston, $5 donation. I need to get my sound effects thing going on here, but he asks, for music video and corporate work, GH5 versus GH5S. Thanks for all your help. For music video and corporate work. The number one thing I ask first with those two cameras when people are trying to figure out which is best is um, what percentage of the time are you handheld like this? If you are doing this 30% of the time or more, maybe 35 plus percent of the time, get the GH5 with the stabilization because it's going to make a lot of sense if under 35 percent of the time it's on sticks or on a tripod get the gh5s because it's going to win in every single way except that issue with that uh, vfr which i would imagine they're going to fix so that's kind of what i uh go for for having that low light for music videos i would imagine would be great um it's wider so corporate work is a lot easier to fit into smaller offices so um, more and more I'm leaning toward the GH5 S, even though I know a lot of people really love the GH5. I love the GH5. Um, but if you're going to be in the back of a truck filming a documentary for an entire summer, then the GH5 is going to make a lot more sense. So great question. Why do you have the mic so close? Because this sounds better than this. If you, I would imagine you'd agree, right? The closer you get the microphone the more rejection you're going to have and it's just going to sound so much better less room noise signal to noise ratios things like that 
Uh, would like to see the way you expose for the XH1 F log without any monitor or something. Yeah. So um, I haven't used F log that much because I find it's hard enough to see that screen on that camera. I'm constantly guessing or double guessing, checking my focus. So F log would make that worse. But I, uh, Matthias Burling told me about that one setting where it's like highlight protect mode or something where it blinks where it's white. And if you use that, you just go up until you start seeing that and then back off a little bit and that would work pretty well. Uh, thanks for making the video guide and the G85 helped a lot. Awesome. Thank you, Virgil, for the kind words there. Um, uh, people are saying don't get the Mavic Air. Moved from the Mavic Pro to the Mavic Air. No regrets. So going back and forth. From what Corbin was telling me, essentially, if you need to go long distances or if you need to be in dense urban environments, get the Pro. If you're not in those situations much or as much, then the Air is a good way to go. Uh, if you're controlling your lighting, which I guess you are, I'd go with the GH5. Yeah, yeah, if you're, if you've got, that's a great point. If you've got lighting dialed in and you never are without light, um, then the GH5 is good. The only other thing with the GH5S, though, is you get that field of view, which is awesome. Will you be getting the Sigma 105? Probably not. Um, who recommends the best Canon lenses? I'm not sure what you mean exactly. Um, oh, yeah. So whoever's trying to paste something, just copy everything after the dot com and paste it, as Trail says. People are chatting about drones, which is dank. Uh, lit with the... Oh, here we go. I think. Okay, cool. So we've got some stuff here. Let me... Hold on a second. Let me get Chrome fired up. And we'll take a look at some stuff. So we'll go to YouTube.com. And we'll do this. And then I need to adjust this. Hold on. Uh, properties. Okay. So please, whoever's looking at this, I'm not doing anything naughty. This is all for education. Uh, yada, 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 fair use. Right. That ought to cover me, right? <laughs> um, all right. So gonna grab this link from alex knight he says lit with the lc160 bot after watching a review uh, let me know if you want this critiqued or just for kicks whoops sorry Let's see if that works uh-oh hmm doesn't seem to be working Let's try that again forward slash watch hmm that didn't work that's a bummer um go ahead and try that again was it youtube.com slash watch and whatever you pasted uh have you seen the exine lenses or zine excuse me lenses or any other cinema lenses you like from acrylic studios what's up acrylic um i have played with them i've worked with the uh, zeiss cp2s and a ton of them. I saw a lot of them at NAB as I move myself up here. Um, there's so many pretty sweet options. I'm curious to see what those Nisi lenses are going to look like. Um, the Zine seem to just be a great budget way to go. And if you don't need that bigger size and weight and similar, you know, uh, dimensions, the DS, the the Rokinon Cine DS, is pretty much exactly the same. Uh, so yeah. Um, I'm just scrolling down here to see if um, the link got reposted. Watch question mark V equals watch question mark. Why am I stuttering here? There we go. Question mark equals. Eh? Nope, that didn't work. Hmm. 
yeah, whoever was posting that link earlier, hook me up again. And I'll uh, try to get that rolling for you. Um, ha have you? Yeah, we looked at that one. Canon 85. Two, 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 two. Any slider recommendations for the C100 from Ethan Hill? Yeah, um, the iFootage Shark S1 is the one I use with my C100 for a long time. Um, there's tons of new options that I'm probably not, haven't tried, but uh, iFootage is pretty solid. Of course, there's Kessler. Um, if you've got some coin you're willing to throw down. Uh, can you make a section on your channel reviewing our short movies? Thanks. Yeah, we could do that here. Um, one thing I was uh, mentioned at the beginning is if you have a YouTube video or you have some lighting questions, um, when it comes to filmmaking, I don't know if I'd be the best person to review shorts and things because I'm just not, I'm not a, uh, you know, Simon Cade. So I couldn't, you know, get super deep on certain levels with you there. But things like lighting, um, especially like, YouTube lighting setups. That's where I'm really, I feel, uh, helpful to my most potential. I don't know. I sleep need more of it. Thanks for doing these live streams. You're welcome, Alan. Thank you for joining. Um, who uses primes or zoom lenses from little man? I, I, for when I did full-time work, I was a big zoom guy. Cause it's just like, you know what it gets the job done. And, um, but now that I'm shooting with different cameras and have a little more time, I'm starting to get back into primes. Looking for low light vintage lenses for concerts. Any recommendations? If you're looking for real fast, um, M42 mount lenses would be uh, a good place to start just because there's so many of them. Um, Ni Nikon Nikkor lenses, uh, FD, depending on what camera you're using, Canon FDs are good. Primes over zooms all day. Um, do you have a recommendation for RGB accent light to aim at the backdrop? So like Philips Hughes or, or whatever knockoff bulbs would do the trick. Otherwise, like, I don't know if you can see them in the shot, but on the back, I don't have them turned on right now. Just buying cheap clamp lights, put an LED bulb in them and a gel. That would do the trick too. Um, and there's some other stuff that I'll, I'll be talking about in the future. Going down here. Should I use S-Log2 or S-Log3 on my A6300? S-Log2 is what you're going to want to go with because S-Log3 is a great color space, but it's huge, and it's just not going to translate well when you're recording in 8-bit. So S-Log2, unless you're on, like, an FS... I don't even know. What what is FS7 have 10-bit or outputting, something like that? So, yeah, for all these little cameras that aren't 10-bit, do uh, S log two. Um, I like how you look at the camera and not all the writing. Nice personal touch, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, I uh, I've been doing some voiceover stuff. I don't know if it. I don't know. I'll probably keep mixing and matching, but it's just hard to remember everything on camera. Have you used the new firmware for the GH five S or GH five? Not yet. Um. Hypothetical situation. I sent 4K 60 signal to a screen that can only take 30p. On screen, I see nothing or what? Um, you should see something. It Well, it depends. Um, depends on if there's pull down and all kinds of video signal-y things that I don't know on the preview end. So it's really going to depend on the monitor. Unfortunately, a lot of monitors won't work with 4K 60 at this time. So... Uh, yeah, there might be a setting in your camera to output 108060 or monitor 108060, in which case a lot of the monitors would cover that. Um, people are saying, yes, I think the autofocus issue is fixed, as fixed as it'll get at least. Um, yeah. Uh, cool, cool, cool. 
Do you recommend making videos on popular topics or videos on unique topics from Tanner? That's a great question. Um, a mix of both, maybe. I never try to like just get on the bandwagon. Um, I know one thing that does work well is if there's something blowing up, if you can f have a similar title and tags and whatnot to someone else's video, you can usually get, you know, uh, in on, on a certain trend. But usually I kind of do a mix. You know, if there's something kind of popular I'll, I'll, or people I know will want to see information on, I'll do a video on that. Otherwise, some of people's biggest videos is stuff they just came up with that no one else, you know, it wasn't a trend at the time or something like that. So I wouldn't try to run a channel where the only thing you do is talk about trends or try to be on the cutting edge of trends. Um, Rath says, thinking of upgrading to XH1 for street fashion, also looking at doing events. If you're talking about like hybrid work, I think that camera's dynamite. If you're talking about strictly video, mm, it would depend. The color alone makes that camera make so much sense, though. Uh, I'll go on down here a little bit. You sound good in Australia. Awesome, Spike. Um, thinking of buying a GH5. What's the deal with Vlog? That extra or is that extra? Yes, it's 100 bucks extra. Unless you're in Australia, maybe, but I can't recall. Have you tried the Quasar Science QLEDs? No, I have not. I was... I a couple times I've put them in my cart to purchase for the entire studio here. Eventually I'll do that. But, uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't purchased them or, or worked with them, but I know people love them. So I probably ought to check them out. Um, mm -hmm. cause of it, this hue system is pricey. Oh, hue lights, right. Um, yeah. So if you're using hues, you're saying there, uh, gun collective. Yeah. I've got a video coming up. I know I constantly say that. I need to stop saying that. But uh, there's some other RGB lights out there if you're okay with something a little more permanent. Thanks for the LED buying guides from Jake. Sweet. Thank you for uh, watching them. I've got more coming up. So I'm working right now on a $100 light kit, and I'll be doing a bunch of other ones here. Um, best out-of-camera footage from Canon cameras. Probably natural or standard if you take the sharpness and contrast down a little bit but if, yeah if you're looking for an out of camera good to go then yes uh gun collective can you explain your current lighting setup uh tomorrow's video i'll show you a behind the scenes of this entire desk as it sits and i'll talk about this lighting setup which is perfect for desk stuff Okay, so, you, so Dan was talking about a slider that is motorized, essentially. iFootage makes one that is available now. Um, and they also, yeah, they have two options, actually. So I can't recall their, the models. Sorry about the thumping. Um, but iFootage, check out their motion control systems. They're, compared to Kessler and stuff, very affordable. And they do make one that can handle some weight. I think you were talking about C100 earlier, in which case you'd be good to go. Uh, do you still use your GHC100? That was an awesome mod. Uh, yes and no. Um, I don't use the GH4 much anymore. Um, so that's kind of sad, but uh, it was good while it lasted, right? Um, <laughs> Question mark V. Okay. So let me try that again. Uh, shoot, where was that link? If you could repost that link, uh, I'll give it a shot here. For those just tuning in, we're going to check out some videos, so feel free to drop them in the comments after the dot .com, and hopefully it'll work. Oh, uh, nuts. I've lost it. Yeah, if you can repost that for me, um, I'll give that a shot. Uh, trying to find back where I was. Uh, somewhere down here. Um, 
lovely content, don't you think? <laughs> Crowley Crew, two dollar donation. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the lighting advice on my video. Yeah, no problem, man. Um, and for those who are tuning in, yeah, you can drop. Hopefully it works. I don't know why we're having a problem here. I copied and pasted, but got nothing. So I'm going to try to find another one down here. Um, message retracted. I'm taking that links trying to get dropped. What's up with the browser taking? Oh, sorry. Yep, I can switch this back. There you go. We were trying to load stuff, but it's it's not doesn't seem to be working. I think that should be the link. Um, yeah, if you're posting a link, make sure you uh, do the tag so I can see like what is it at DSLR video shooter. That way I can make sure I catch your link and don't lose it again. Uh, you should do a video on cheap Kino Flow alternatives. Yeah, that would be an interesting video. I know a lot of people you can make um, uh, something very similar. Or, yeah, so that Came TV company is coming out with something similar to the um, uh, Quasar Science stuff. And that looks pretty interesting. And they even, they're going to be selling a little bracket to connect multiple multiples together. That could be pretty sweet. Um, it's going to be RGB, BWWB, uh, bicolor. So, yeah, looking forward to checking those out when they come out. Um People are asking about the GH5 firmware. Yes, it's it's supposed to, and it looks like from what I've seen so far, uh, going to fix the autofocus issues. Speaking of autofocus issues, Jake asked uh, about the 24 to 28 to 75 for Tamron from Tamron. Seems like people are having issues with video autofocus. Hopefully that gets solved because I think that's going to be a killer lens. All right, Sam, you just dropped in a link. Let's try that. Um, what do I need to put before that? Uh, Oakley Media Showreel. Cool. Loading it up. Are you guys going to be able to hear the sound here? Maybe I'll keep the sound off so I don't get in trouble. Gorgeous stuff, by the way. Really like the color. Oh, my gosh. I'm such an idiot. I'm sorry. Here we go. <laughs> Reload that for you guys. So this is from Sam Oat Oatly. OT. Yeah, I'm really digging the your tones. I like how it's I don't know if you did this on purpose, but how you're kind of removing everything but a specific set of colors it looks like. Which is always hard to set up, but if you can get it dialed in, it man, it makes such a difference. So essentially not having purple, magenta, green, red, but where you can take, you know, some of these colors. Let me find a good example I just saw. Like that. Uh, come on. The chainsaw scene here. You've got nice oranges, greens, a little bit of blue, browns, but it's not like something purple. Uh, and you can't always play in that stuff, but in post, you can kind of grab those colors and change them around. Make this a little bigger here. Make sure you can see this stuff, too. Nice, sexy Ferrari stuff. Looks nice. What do you shoot with? It's a good reel. I like how you, you're showing, like, a really nice mix of... Uh, um, all kinds of different clientele. I was talking to a uh, production house the other day, and one thing they're finding, and it's totally true, is if all you do is, you know, all the sexy stuff and all you show in your reel is the really, really sexy projects, uh, often the money projects won't come to you. Because if someone's like, well, I just need, you know, a video for my manufacturing company, but that doesn't involve beaches and bikinis. I'm not going to hire these guys because they're obviously doing these big, sexy projects. Um, so making sure hey, you have a nice mix there, like you totally showed a uh, beautiful mix of, you know, the Ferrari stuff, maybe some high end looking stuff, but also, you know, little things here and there that uh, ensures you have a nice, you're going to get, you know, uh, more work, essentially a broader uh, collection of work. 
All right. Um, next one. Let me just make sure that's not life and death here. Um, looking down, looking down. Here's one. Let me know what you think from AC123. Here we go. Hearts Apart official music video. Is music coming through for you guys? I just I don't know if I should or should not do that. I feel like I shouldn't just so I don't get in trouble. Even if I could, I don't know how I would. This button? Sorry if that's too loud. Let me know if that's annoying. Better hit, put headphones on, I suppose. I like the teal. Sorry, this light's kind of blinding me. Yep. Nice teal tones. Handheld stuff is nice. It's not super jittery. I know that's one thing that, uh, especially back when I got started, was so hard to not do, is have all this jittery DSLR stuff. I remember when I told my dad I was going to get into DSLR video back when it first was hitting and happening. Um, let me turn this down a little bit. Uh, the first thing he said was, how are you going to stabilize the sensor? And then I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> I'm not going to, you know, gonna, you can tell. You go back to videos produced in that era, uh, and there's just so much jittery, jittery stuff. It's amazing now with all these cameras that have built-in stabilization and stuff. Nice transition shots between different uh, band members instead of just sticking with one. Oop, hang on one second, guys. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks good, man. If I had a critique, uh, I don't know if you did too much lighting on the, the actual band set. Um, so maybe play around with that. I know it's really tough to light big groups of people. Um, but yeah, man, if you could master that. Whew. Cool. So nice stuff, AC123. Um, looking for another one. Uh, okay, I'm going to copy this in. Up, oh, add, add. Ah. Don't want to get in trouble for that. Um, why is there an ad? Oh, I'm not signed in. Interested to think of the coloring on this. I mix a lot of cameras in my workflow, so it's tricky. Cool. Yeah, that's rough. All right, we'll turn this back on. Nice drone action. Let me center this up here. Just like a trail video. Very nice. For you guys, so Maybe shorten way. up the edits a little bit. I don't know if you have a time constraint. Yeah, okay, you got some GoPro. Are there any more interesting cameras these days for action, aside from that Z, Z something camera? I feel like we should start seeing like more larger sensor stuff. Um, I mean, color looks good. It might not perfectly match amongst, you know, the different cameras, but I mean, like you said, that's really tough. And I imagine a lot of these shots, you know, you don't have a color chart out there, so it's not like you can, you know, put them all together but was pretty nervous to see where this stuff looks a little bluish but you know time of day shifts and whatnot a lot of it looks pretty solid though nice work all right um let's go down got another one here director's reel from almon film by the way the previous one was uh nuts where was it 
I lost it already. Um, so we'll pop this one in here. Ooh, very nice. Love this. Super, super clean. Really, really nice. And shots like that, uh, what's interesting is a lot of the time we get so caught up with making something beautiful or cinematic that we forget why we're doing these projects, which is to sell something for someone. And I feel like shots and lighting like this, it's going to sell. The most ordinary sights and sounds and smells. The texture of shadows on the floor in front of you. Very nice. All these things without being named. A little anamorphic saying, action shadow, I see. That's red. That's brown. That's somebody. I'm curious what lenses you, or adapters you're using. Longer, you start seeing. So I'm working on some content for that. Fine. You see, if you if you force sound into five tones, you force color into five. Super colors, clean, good stuff. The, the world of color is infinite, as is the world of sound. I love this stuff right here. Really nice texture. I love that. Like, if you can perfectly balance that cool um, and warm look, which it looks like, you, I mean, it's really, it's really nice stuff there. Fixing conceptions on the world of color and sound, but you really begin to hear it and see it. Nice work, man. Cool. Like a lot. Um, it's awesome that you're showing other people's work here. Very generous. Uh, I was watching Maddie Poya. He refused to do it. Oh. Um, cool. Yeah, just hopefully I won't get in trouble for <laughs> if something shows up here. There's like a little logo of some soda brand and I get hammered. Um, cool. So let's go ahead. Is there any other here before we wrap up? Ooh, Vimeo. We can do a Vimeo. Uh, cinematography reel. All right. Vimeo.com. Been a while since I've been over there. Jordan Wright. Whoa. Will this even work if I go full screen? Yeah, we'll stay like this. Is there sound? Whoops. Let me get the sound going. Up, oh, up, oh, abort. Sorry about that. <laughs> the, uh, all right, let's try that again. Um, things froze a little bit. Leave it to Vimeo to kind of wreck my setup here. Um, rechange this. Give me one second, guys. Boop, we're back. I'm trying to turn up the volume without crashing Chrome. Okay, here we go. Very nice. I'm trying to look at it while I have two backlights and this thing on. If I had to guess, I'm guessing Canon. You shoot this stuff on Canon? Gotta be canon. Sure, probably some other stuff too, but. SLR Magic 2X, man. Good stuff. Ooh, Mirror 37. Hey, you've got some. I like it. Um, Almond. That's some nice kit. I love that 2X. It's so great. If it weren't so bloody, bulky, and front heavy. Right here, that shot, that was really nice. Let's go back a little bit. Very nice. Um, Jordan, was this uh, was this Canon? I'm curious. Nice work. Yeah, it's really too bad about Vimeo. I mean, who knows? Things can change, right? But. Um, yeah, that's a nice little lens. I actually uh, am building a very similar one 
Um, maybe I'll grab it. We'll finish up on that real quick. Um, going back to this. Going to go back to this. Give me one second. I'm going to grab a whole bunch of lenses. I'm one lens away from the set. So one second. If you're ever on an actual film set, this is how you're supposed to carry the lenses around and hand them to your your cinematographer or AC. That's the proper way to do it. <laughs> so this has been a long time in the works. And again, I got one more to go to finish this up, but I've been shooting a little bit with these and I'm doing some more shooting here before long and loving them. So um, it's kind of a Helios uh, mirror mix because those two seem to play really nice together. So the first one is this beast, the uh, Mir 20M, it's a 20 millimeter, uh, 3.5, really nice, surprisingly low distortion. It's huge, by the way. So it's got a push on lens cap. I don't think it has any threads, no. Um, massive, but uh, really nice low distortion. Really, really dig this one. And then the next one up is uh, one that I don't have, but it's a, oh no, I do have it, don't I? Sorry, I get confused because all these are, are named differently. It's not like blah, 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 28 millimeter. It's like mere 20 M 30 millimeter or 35 millimeter. Um, and I'm in the middle of getting them all cinema eyes, if you will. Is it over here? I think it's this one. Yeah, so this is the mirror uh 20 or 35 millimeter f2 but it's the mirror 24 m is the correct title for it essentially so and they all they all look similar so i'm building it oops there goes that lens cap building a set that you know kind of aesthetically lines up as well as uh the actual image will create so 35 f2 uh, i'm missing the 28 millimeter 3.5 so that's the last one to get um Next up, we have the 50 millimeter uh, 1.8. This is a Helios, come on, focus. Uh, Helios 77M4. So, yeah, that's that one. And then, of course, the famous Helios 44 II, 58 millimeter F2. Same style. Um, this one's kind of the awkward one, and they still make this today, but this is the Zenit, uh, or Helios 44-2. It's an 80 millimeter, one, 85 millimeter, 1.4, huge honking piece of glass, uh, really nice, uh, book on this puppy. But I like that you're using the Jupiter, uh, 9, I think, the 80 mil, 85 millimeter, that's way better for... For the anamorphic stuff um and then last we've got the tar uh 11a come on a7 three let's go and this one's fun um 135 f28 but look at that look at those aperture blades mm, so yummy uh 20 i think aperture blades on this guy so no matter where you're at, you're getting beautiful brown, brown, not brown, round bokeh, excuse me. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. So yeah, that whole set you can slowly build and each of those lenses, prices are all over, but from like 50 bucks to, I would say they probably top out at maybe 300. Uh, and like I said, this uh, Zenit or Helios 44 II is still made today. So you can pick it up like with a cannon mount and uh, all these except for this one are m42 uh oh it is okay so 44 m is different technically than the 44 2 right but the same you know what i mean 58 f2 there's a bazillion different versions of that so yeah that was fun maybe let's do that more let's um let's maybe pick a topic or 
um, lighting or sound and maybe we'll do some stuff like that Cr critique each other's videos and of course I'm no expert you know I uh, I feel like I'm pretty good at helping people figure out studio spaces lighting in particular stuff like this um, but uh, you know you guys can hook me up too. I mean if you go back and even not that long ago you can find videos of mine that are terrible like I'll watch stuff and be like what was I doing what why am I purple <laughs> so we're all learning that's the point um, I think we're gonna wrap this one up guys I'm well over I apologize for not starting this on time thank you guys so much for uh, hopping in and uh, we're gonna wrap this one up tomorrow's video we're talking about the desk setup um, particularly this monitor a new BenQ monitor will be in there it's not gonna be a monitor review it's gonna be a desk setup but um, I disguised a, a little bit in there we talk about the monitor just because I, I didn't feel up for doing a whole nother you know spec sheet reading if you will um, so yeah that should be fun and uh, we talk about gaming just a little bit and uh, show some clips of me attempting to play some games which I really enjoy and haven't uh, uh, done a ton of but yeah have a great rest of your evening thank you curry shot for your ten dollar donation he says showing support as always i learned something from your channel thanks man really awesome uh you guys have a great great rest of your evening and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next video tomorrow